I am honored to introduce Tom Douglas this evening as our graduation speaker. Tom is a wonderful example of a great father, friend, and husband. He is kind, thoughtful, creative, and generous. In many ways, I thought that his speech tonight would be appropriate for our graduates because he is the father of one of your classmates. He has also followed his heart and his head by pursuing a dream and building a career of meaningful creativity. Twice he pursued careers other than songwriting by first entering the advertising world and then selling commercial real estate. But I suspect those distractions only fueled his desire to pursue songwriting and to offer him the dimension and grounding and perspective to excel in a world filled with ideas and words and music. Born in Atlanta and educated at Oglethorpe and Georgia State University for his undergraduate and graduate degrees, Tom first tried the business and commercial worlds in Atlanta and Dallas. He grew up in a home where his father instilled in him a love for music. Although Tom's dad sold steel during the day, he frequently played the piano and ukulele in the evenings. Tom Douglas never forgot that music. He enrolled in a songwriting class in Austin, Texas, and caught the attention of NBA alumnus Paul Worley, who recognized his talent, particularly his song Little Rock, and signed him to Sony Records. He has written songs for Garth Brooks and Colin Ray and Brooks and Dunn and Martina McBride and Tim McGraw and Blake Shelton and George Strait and Randy Travis and Leanne Womack and Trisha Yearwood and Lady Annie Bellum's I Run to You and Miranda Lambert's The House That Built Me. Some of his critics describe him as quite simply our conscience. I introduce him to you as a friend and a father tonight who has earned our respect and admiration because of who he is and what he cares about. Please join me in welcoming our speaker for MBA's 146th commencement, Tom Douglas. Well, good evening and congratulations. Gentlemen, you look fantastic tonight. And with singing that good, as the old preacher used to say, we could just say amen and go home. So that was, that was glorious singing as well. I would like to thank Headmaster Joya for the honor of addressing you all tonight, the distinguished guests in this, this class. As, as many of you may or may not know, tonight is really just a storyline in the TV show Nashville. The, uh, the cameras are hidden, so you really can't see them. That's a joke, anyway, that's not really true. Many people have asked me if the uh, co-writing that, that happens on the TV show Nashville is really as, as spicy as, as appears on TV, and I can assure you that it's not, so. Um, <clears throat> but I'm so delighted to be here. I love MBA. I've loved MBA since I first set foot on the campus uh, years ago. We moved from Texas to uh, Nashville, and Tommy and I would drive by and see these storied columns and just think about the history of this amazing institution and we, we both wondered if it was possible if he could ever attend here much less graduate so it's certainly a dream come true for for us tonight so we're really delighted to be here I love the symmetry of MBA I love the buildings I love the architecture I love the Harry Potter-esque dining room I just dig the vibe. I think vibe is an underappreciated noun. What does vibe mean? Vibe means, you know, the feeling that is evoked by a person or place or a thing. It's, it's, it's the vibrations that you get. But the main thing I love about MBA is I love the people. I love the people that are here, the dedicated educators that are here to teach our sons. It's such a privilege to be here. So I would ask you, I would ask you fellows tonight, what, what vibe do you get from MBA? What are the colors and the sights and the sounds that you'll take with you? It's a, uh, the things that I love. I love the green of the lacrosse field. I love the yellow pop of the tennis ball. I love the cheers of a Friday night football game. You will leave the campus tonight as alumni. So you need to drink in these memories. You need to soak in them. You will need to savor them in the days and months and the years to come. It will be a deposit from which you will need to draw. You have to practice the art of remembering. It's almost a lost art. 
What is MBA? Well, maybe it's the place where you took your first dip of skull. Maybe it's where you asked the first girl to dance. It's where you failed a Latin test and learned to say I love you in Spanish. It's where you learned that Hamlet had a much more dysfunctional relationship with his family than you do. It's high school. It's the only one you'll ever have. It's the house where you grew up. It's your mother, it's your father, it's your sisters, it's your brothers. It's your coaches, the preachers, the rabbis. It's your favorite pizza joint. It's the place where you stop off after school and you scrape the silver from the floorboard of your car and you walk into the BP station like you own it and you get a giant iced tea. This is your life, but it's just the first chapter. So I've thought long and hard about what I could possibly say to you all tonight that could have any import as you go forward. So I've come up with three things, and here they are. You have to remember where you're from. You have to remember who you are and whose you are. It sounds pretty simple, doesn't it, at this moment, but trust me, it will get fuzzy from this point forward. So who are you? Well, you're a graduate of MBA. You're a son. You're a resident of the volunteer state. You're a citizen of the United States of America. But it will get a little more difficult. But there is a deep voice inside you. There is a fire that burns. You have to fan that flame and you have to listen to that still small voice within you. It's whispering to you. It's telling you, you are a painter. You are a writer. You're a planter of seeds. You're a builder. You're a singer. You're a dreamer. It's not either or, it's both and. You will go to college and you will study economics and computer science and chemistry. But you have to find that voice and you have to listen to it. You have to look at the man that God has called you to be. The world needs you, we need you. We need poetic chemists, we need singing lawyers, we need dancing bankers, we need colorful scientists. The man of commerce needs to meet the man of the arts. The warrior needs to shake hands with the statesman. It's the return of the Renaissance man. That's what we need. That's who you are. It will make you interesting, but more importantly, the girls will really dig it. <laughs> so you have to dream and you have to remember where you're from, who you are, and to whom you belong. Bookmark that and I'll circle back to it. When I started out as a freshman at the University of Georgia, I was pretty sure I knew who I was. I was a poet, I was a writer. And the first thing I did was go locate <clears throat> all the pianos in the dorms and the music department at the University of Georgia. I was quickly overwhelmed though. The uh, conspiracy of amnesia started its assault. The football games were really overwhelming. Fraternity rush was a crush. I was lost in a sea of girls, too pretty and boys too tall and too strong and too handsome. My first year of college, well, here's a few of the lowlights. Words you hope you and your parents never hear. Stop, this is the police. Put your hands on top of the vehicle and spread your legs. It was a classic case of drinking stupid juice and being in the wrong place at the wrong time. I spent a splendid evening courtesy of the Athens Police Department. My first roommate dropped out of college because he was in love with his stepmother. Sounds scandalous, doesn't it? Trust me, there's nothing new under the sun. I wish I could tell you different. There is a darkness on the edge of town, to borrow a phrase from Bruce Springsteen. The first thing they'll try to do is make you forget. It is the conspiracy of amnesia. Day by day with the acrid smell of smoke and the ivy drip of grain alcohol, your memory will start to fade. And one morning you'll wake up in a dorm room and you'll look in the mirror and you won't recognize the face. To thine own self be true, but that's Shakespeare and you already knew that. I knew I was a poet, a writer, a movie maker, a Broadway actor. Oh, the hours I would spend riding shotgun with the Wichita lineman and Glenn Campbell. Exploring strawberry fields with Sergeant Pepper, walking the yellow brick road with Dorothy as she sang down the yellow brick road. I was those songs and those songs were me and Bobby McGee and Chris Christopherson. But songwriting, that was probably for someone else, not me. You go to college, you graduate, and you go to work for IBM or Trammel Crow, and you drive a big black suburban with tinted windows, and you wear a blue suit with a red tie and a cell phone, and you close big deals. And if you were me, you were kind of miserable. 
Something was missing. I was starting to forget. Then enter stage right and the poet returns. I was 27 and I finally ran away from home. My parents thought I was crazy, gone to join a circus of gypsies in Nashville. But I drank deep from the cup in Music City. I was in heaven. Writers, players, singers, words poured out, notes fell from the sky. I got a cool guitar and a black leather jacket. Then it all came crashing down. My father became ill and came to live with me here, and the storms came, and they tried to wash me away. It is the collision of the conspiracy of amnesia and the art of remembering. So who are you, where are you from, and whose are you? I couldn't get any traction in Nashville. Couldn't make a living, I was defeated. It's all wrong, I missed it. The poet misled me. Silly verses and uneven choruses, but the death of a dream is usually the birth of another. I fell in love with a beautiful girl. I moved to Dallas, I threw myself back into the real estate business, reinvented myself with bluer suits and redder ties and a bigger car. But the poet kept creeping back in the shallows of my mind. There I was in the dead heat of August, cold calling shopping centers in Dallas. But I was traveling really the badlands with Bruce Springsteen. I was riding with the police as they defined synchronicity. And I discovered the Joshua Tree with you two. All with the soundtrack of my life playing in the back of my mind. So I asked God, if you've given me the soul of a poet, why do you have me masquerading as a real estate broker? The silence was deafening. I actually like blue suits and red ties, and I like Suburbans. I am that guy, but I'm also the poet. Could it be both and? Is it either or? I've spent too much time wasting and wringing my hands, pondering what God's will is for my life. It's really pretty obvious. What do you love to do and yearn to do? Well, do that. Walk through that door. He gives you the desire for it in the first place. I got down on my knees and I asked for forgiveness. I was baptized in the river. He helped me remember. He whispered, I am from a beautifully broken family of harmony singing, clinically depressed, piano playing, ukulele playing, steel salesman, and an interior decorator. That's where I'm from, so write about what you know. The blue suit sat down at a baby grand piano and wrote the truth about an alcoholic working in a Walmart in Little Rock. I knew that guy. It's a metaphor about starting over. I'm always starting over. Was signed to Sony Publishing, as Brad said. My first song went to number one. More number ones, CMA, ACM, Song of the Year. Been to the Grammys, found myself shoulder to shoulder with Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt at the Golden Globes. I've had a toast at the Oscars with my wife. 20 million air plays on my songs. If you played them back to back, it would take 34 years. So what? So what, I got lost, I forgot, but I remembered. You will get lost, but you will remember. God will chase you down and bring you back home. And you, you are a glorious sight. You are the smiling faces of the future. Who are you? You are loved. You see the guy to the left and the right of you? He will call you from some distant wasteland in the future and you will need to remind him of his heritage. Whose are you? You are mine. You are ours. Where are you? You are from us, and we send you. Go and love as you have been loved. Love the lonely boy on the hall who will medicate himself with Adderall and Twinkies. Rescue the girl who's drunk at a fraternity party. Take her home. Dig a well for the thirsty child in Africa. Feed a homeless woman on the streets of Chicago. Talk down the Wall Street tycoon in golden handcuffs from a ledge in Manhattan. Find the cure for cancer and hatred and poverty and prejudice. It won't be easy, but you are up to the challenge. Don't worry about being awesome. Be faithful. They will come for you with a jealous hatred. You are able. Watch out for Cain. They will come for you with a beautiful woman bathing on a rooftop. You are King David. Beware of Bathsheba. They will sell your soul for 30 pieces of silver. Beware of the Judas kiss. They will come for you with a computer and tell you that it's God. Don't fall for it. There is a darkness on the edge of town, but be the salt and light to a decaying and dark culture that desperately needs redemption. You are loved. That's who you are. Now, go in love. <laughs>